Welcome back to Air Vapid Trail Talk 46. Did I get the number right? I think I did. I, All right, we're back know. in studio here. This is our Western States Roundup Recap for 2022. Thanks for joining us once again. It is great to be back. Great to have you back in the studio, Matt. Yeah, it's exciting. Recovered from the from the long weekend of uh, viewing pleasure. Yep, I was couch ridden the whole live stream. Very happy about that. Um, instead of running around, running myself ragged for once. I think it's the first time I've missed Western States in a number of years. Um, but I feel for all of you that were out there. I, I'm je definitely jealous uh, a bit, but it was nice to kick the feet up and just take it in from afar for once. And I know we were texting nonstop throughout the experience. <laughs> so today we are going to go through some of our reactions and takeaways from the Western States 100 of this year, what it means for the sport. And also we're going to get into that live stream a little bit, talk about uh, that incredible live stream that Billy and team put together that had us all glued to our TVs and our phones all weekend. And we got a shout out uh bryce here who was on he was on site i really want to hear about his experience first time experiencing the western states 100 on the ground as a pacer a spectator so we're gonna get into all of it and thank you all for joining us again for our weekly show air of Epic trail talk it's awesome Whew. that, that was, was a lot i was preparing for the intro yeah can you tell yeah i think that's what you've been training for uh over the last few weeks I'm just going to start watching the live stream again. Actually, this is not the live stream. This is a shout out to Chase the Summit. Chase the Summit YouTube channel. They got some sights and sounds. So we do have this playing in the background. Go check out their full video. Um, I haven't watched the full thing, but thanks for providing some of these for us. Yeah. Awesome. You want to get into uh, some Era Viper talk before we dive into all things Western? Yeah, definitely. We want to uh, use this show as a little bit of a way to keep the tabs on the air of IPA community what's going on with us what's coming up so we are going to spend a few minutes talking about that and of course as always answering your guys's questions here in the chat so if you have any questions about air of IPA running in general uh, anything we have going on please drop them in the chat we'd love to answer them if you have a question about a race coming up or how to train for something we're happy to answer that so um yeah air of IPA wise we have like a bit of a deep breath it feels like with events. So we've been going what feels like nonstop for, for quite some time. And we've got a little bit of a break in between events here. So we did have a small mountain bike race in Colorado this last Friday, but our next running event isn't until, um, not this weekend, but next. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, I guess it is what Tuesday now, but yeah, we got, um, about a week and a half to the Kendall mountain run Silverton Alpine marathon duo weekend in Silverton, Colorado. This is uh, two of our highest altitude events on the calendar. They both go up to 13,000 feet and it is the perfect kind of lead in to the hard rock 100 week. The, the dates kind of flip flopped on us one year in a really positive way. So hard rock moved a week later and we used to be the week after hard rock and it's really cool to have a lot of people are already in town for the Hard Rock 100, kind of just arriving, and now there's um, really a, a race for everyone from eight miles up to the 50K. If you want a steep mountain race with Kendall or you want that classic road, kind of dirt road marathon, we've got that for you as well. So uh, I'm just always plug it, but it should be just a great weekend or you can always do both, so. Yep, yeah, and then in addition to that, the one big other thing, the uh, the 4th of July themed Run Steep merch. So if you haven't already uh, gotten yours, go on over to shop.mountainoutpost.com. Get yours. There's still time to- Last uh, chance to get them. To get it before the holiday is here. But really stoked with how these turned out. So shout out to, uh, to Chrissy downstairs in printing for uh, bringing these concepts to life. And uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, last last plug. Raised by Rams vertical challenge uh, going to be at the end of the July. Registration is open. Runsignup.com slash raised by Rams is where you can register. Got a lot of cool uh, kind of uh, in-game challenge type things as well. So opportunity to win some cool prizes. So sign up. Nice. Yeah. What this weekend got me thinking about having 
And this is kind of going to parlay into uh, our Western States discussion, but also talk about Aravipa stuff too, is the live streams that happened because there was more than one. Mm -hmm. So not only did we have the 31 hours, not only the 31 hours of Western States, but all of the pre race content and also like the award ceremony. And I was commenting to Matt, it was really impressive from start to finish. Like they had everything from race week, pre-produced content going out on their channel, of little athlete stories to the pre-race meeting. There were athlete panel interviews live on site that you could, um, they built up a stage for right before broken arrow and that stage existed through Western States. So they utilized that quite a bit. And they had a bunch of cool panels, research panels. I didn't get to watch all those, but I thought it was really great. The amount of live content, if you wanted it, it was really there for you. Um, you know, I'll definitely be, I think we'll be looking to, you know, maybe build upon that concept of some of our events coming up. We'd love to do some extended, extended content the week of some of our big races. And then Marathon Mont Blanc, as soon as the, I think the thrill of like the top women's finishers came in, Marathon Mont Blanc was just starting over in Chamonix. And so I had my laptop with that going on. I had my big screen TV going on. I think you might have, did you pat, we passed out by that point or did you pull it up? I was, that was a little okay. late for I stopped uh, getting the text from Matt and I was like, <laughs> well, we might've moved on. But um, yeah, I was watching the start of that. Um, the crazy thing to me, they have like the, what's becoming, I think pretty popular some of these bigger races, these LED start finish line arches. And I'm like, is this where we're going now? I guess it is like they've got this full LED panel on the, on the front and back sides of their start finish lines now. And they've got all these graphics and the race clock is going <laughs> off and sponsor things. And have you seen this? No, but I and then mean, the name will flash up as they're finishing. Yeah, even one there was like a one of the Instagram shorts that you put into our little group chat on the the podcast page where the guys racing the train. Even then, they had like a full oh. on on the top of the mountain. They had like an LED, like a full on like they had his picture next to his time. Yeah, place. I guess we'll have to look into see how affordable these things are. Seems like the next thing, at least uh, an LED maybe outdoor panel with like some live shots from the course I think would be would be great yeah I mean the the stuff that they do over there uh like tech wise has been really awesome to yeah. see both from the live stream and like some of the experiential type stuff that yeah they bring into the table and I only caught like the first handful of miles before I had to just call it a night because it was getting pretty late <laughs> um you know I think I was up at up at five and and up to like yeah 11 or midnight or something but um yeah, it's pretty flat for the first part, and they they go heavy into the e-bikes first off. And I was trying to tell they have multiple of these guys, and they almost have like they clearly have the camera like it's not mounted on the bike; it's like in their hands, mm -hmm. so they're able to bike clearly bike one handed, and then like adjust their shot a bit. It seemed like I don't know if it was just a handheld camera or if it was like on a helmet or something, but anyways, it's very interesting. Um, and the, the feed from over there was so crispy. Marathon Mont Blanc, like they must have like some TV broadcast quality equipment or something. Yeah. Well, my guess is that connectivity there is probably a little bit better. Tons of towns there, everywhere. There's so many, yeah, there's so many yeah. towns kind of in those mountainous areas. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. It definitely got me thinking already about our fall live streams, which... Uh, we do plan to live stream the Havilene 100 and also Flagstaff Sky Peaks this year. Those are our two big targets for our own live streams. So, the making lots of notes and and making starting to dream a little bit about what that could look like. So, yeah, for sure, it's it's always exciting to you know see what other people are doing and uh, kind of learn so that we can continue to grow and push the sport forward. You know, yeah. Cool. Well, let's move into Western States. Um, where should we start this week? Do we want to start? Um, Bryce, do you want to tell us oh, a boy. little bit about your experience? I'm just <laughs> going to put you on the spot, but yeah, bring it why? Up. what brought you out there and when did you get out there and, and so on and so forth? Yeah. So Pete Mortimer of the Air Viper Racing Team, uh, when we were up in Flagstaff talking to him, he kind of casually is just like, do you want to pace at Western? I'm like, uh, yeah. Not gonna pass that up. So we went out there. We drove up uh, to Lake Tahoe, 
which I've never been there before. Beautiful. I mean, it's so thick. And I had, I mean, I knew that Lake Tahoe is big and I knew that it's like, it, there's a hundred mile loop around it, but it's like a 170 mile loop. <laughs> yeah. It was bigger than I th- It was cool. Um, and then yeah, race day was crazy. It was a blur. Uh, woke up early for the start, saw them off and then just a lot of driving just to go to the different aid station checkpoints, but everything's like super organized. They had like shuttle buses going back and forth from like a lot of these staging areas and then jumped on with Pete at mile 80 to pace and didn't get dropped, managed to keep up, although it wasn't super easy. Pete was like crushing it at mile 80. He's, he, I, he hikes so fast cause he does Eldon like every other day. So he's like, He's just walking the uphills and I'm having to walk and then he starts pulling away from me and then I jog, catch up. And it was just like repeating <laughs> that for 15 miles. And yeah, it was, it was a really cool experience. Nice. Which aid stations did you make it out to? Were you crewing all day as well? Cause that, that does turn into a long exhausting day. If you're up at the start to cheer and yep. then see him off and then you're crewing and then you have to jump in and pace and take care of yourself while you're kind of taking care of the runner and driving around. Yeah. And it was hot. I mean, like everybody, like at every single aid station was just like huddled in all these little shade points. Uh, but so we made, we were at the start. Um, and then we drove to Mich, not Mich, Michigan bluff. Is that mm-hmm. that mile, mile 30 aid station? Well, Robinson flat would be 30. You're right. Right. It was Robinson flat. And then we went to <laughs> Michigan, bluff, Michigan bluff and, and then, then forest, hill. forest hill. And then I went down to green gate yep. and then that's where I paced him. And then we got to see, uh, Scott Jurek and Al Corner at one of the aid stations, which was like, <laughs> I, at first I didn't recognize it. And then I see Pete's face and <laughs> Pete's just like jaw drops. He's like, could you give a picture of me? And yeah, yeah, I saw that picture. That's amazing. That is so cool. Did you make it, did you go down to the river or did you wait at the Green, Grade aid, Green Gate aid station for him to come up the hill? I, I waited at the Green Gate oh, for okay. him. Yeah. Did he have a pacer before? So you swapped out there? Sarah Osuzuki, oh, also nice. Arab Viper racing team member. Sweet. did 20 miles with them. So she went to Forest Hill, crossed the river and then swapped out with you at Green Gate. Yep. And nice. then uh summer I go took them the last 6 miles and they were dropping like 7 6 minute mile pace for most oh, nice. of that. Oh nice. So you pointed rocks is where you swapped out then. Yep. Perfect. Nice. Sounds, Sounds like stuff. a great time. It was an experience. Crewing that race is like an endurance event of its own. Yeah, it definitely feels like it would be easier to be the runner than the crew, especially <laughs> at Western States, because I mean, you, you, from the start, you see him off and to get to the next crewable aid station, mile 30, you have to go past the finish line in Auburn, basically, right? right. You're driving all the way down and then all the way back up. Yep. It's not, not easy, uh, to get around out there. Uh, did it make you, I don't know if you wanted to do Western States before, but did this influence your decision to want to do it someday like is this on your list if it wasn't before yeah it was on my list as like a one day i'd like to do it uh, it kind of moved the urgency up a little bit and then also it kind of i mean like it's just so hot and there's <laughs> so much more climbing than you think it i mean it's it's hard you see some of these top guys come through like people that you see their names and they're just like these star runners and they, you see them come through and they're like barely walking or like they're about to drop at certain age stations. And it's like, yeah, it's real. Yeah. And it's a lot, some of them make it look so easy, yes. which I think is the hardest part. Like you see Adam Peterman and there was that hilarious meme going around where, and I don't know if this is one you're going to pull up, but it was like Adam Peterman before the start of his first hundred. And he's just like, <laughs> like this smiling guy. And then like, after his first hundred and it's the same picture because he looked like unchanged between the start and the end and like all day. It didn't seem like he had a real rough patch. I think he said he did have a small one somewhere along the way, but yeah, he did pretty well for all things considered of what, what could happen out there. Yeah. And on the track, like he's giving high fives, taking his time, just like enjoying it. Oh, and behind you are the, uh, the T-Rexes that, were being mentioned before. Did you I guess. see this? Yeah, I did. Does anyone know the story behind it? Not entirely, no. I guess I'm gonna have to ask Skyler about this because I think I, I think Varner was one of the ones inside, so he would probably know what's up with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were definitely three. Uh, if you can't see the images here, there were three different dinosaur costumed runners chasing Ruth Croft the final half mile to the finish and around the track. 
<laughs> so there's some great photos and great video out there of that. She seemed confused by it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a Kiwi thing. Who knows? Uh, I'm out of the loop, but we'll try and figure that out. Maybe we'll break the news on the the Outpost podcast later this week. So uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, they make it look easy. And what I was thinking during as like people were coming in. So like Scott Trayer, who we see firsthand here in Phoenix, you know, he works here and you see a lot of his training and I know a lot of the places he's running. I mean, this dude is running a hundred and hundred to 140 mile weeks, tons of climbing. He's doing these, you know, insane runs up and down Mount Ord up to 7,000 feet. And that's 10th place right there. And like a ways behind Adam Peterman, like a couple hours, I think. I, I don't remember, maybe an hour and a half. I don't know. But it's like, man, these guys are that much faster than even Scott Trayer on a day like that. It's incredible. Yeah, and you have to think like his heat adapta- heat adaptation had to be pretty on point given that he's like training here in Phoenix. He's running in the middle of the day when it's super hot. Uh, and so, you know, for on a hot day to still be, you know, 90 minutes faster than him is pretty crazy. Yeah, we definitely should talk about the heat because it seems like there was a wide variety of, um, and you can probably help us for being out there firsthand because you probably saw a lot of the top runners coming through some of those stations. Yes. So it seemed like some runners were super dialed, some maybe less so. I, I don't know if there was a correlation of that, of like how people did. It seemed like almost every top runner at least had an ice bandana. And on the live stream, we saw at... Duncan Canyon mile 24 they were going to town already like that's still way up in the high country and they were they were already using the ice bandanas I think Scott had a dialed thing at Robinson Flat he put his naked vest on yep. and he was filling all the different compartments not with food but with ice just mm. filling that thing up so he's basically got this cooling vest to take it to another level Tyler Green and Drew Holman from Nike, I don't know if you saw this, but they had like these cooling, like proprietary cooling vests on. Did you see that? I didn't see the vests. There might be, if you can pull up maybe, um, I don't know, one of their Instagrams maybe. Or did you see those vests, the The, Nike vests? They were white. They were white and they had like blue, some sort of blue inserts in them. So I don't know if they were just swapping these inserts out, but someone at some point made a comment that they had they were like waiting to show these off like they had been maybe working on these for a while um but it seemed like it was something more than was just available off the shelf oh here's uh well i don't know if this is oh it. yeah that's i think that's exactly what it is yep that's exactly what it is and it's these blue i don't know if they're like bladders like ice packs like no. ice packs yeah. and you yeah. just swap the ice packs out but they're like full length ice packs and there's probably some on the back too i would imagine Yep. Yeah, yeah, and they've yeah they've got loops in them, so they probably just toss them in and clip them and clip go. Them so they stay in. It's like that's insane. It like, looks like a, it looks pretty freaking cool too. It's like a blizzard. <laughs> <Yeah. vest. laughs> <Like, laughs> so I don't know. That was one of my observations. And those guys, of course, you saw them moving right up the field like clockwork. I mean, granted, they were I think what fourth and fifth this year, and they were second and third last year. So something to it. And whereas I think like Camille, I didn't see doing that. Like I didn't see her drenched in water. She was just kind of dry, mm. but I don't know. Did you see her getting, taking on ice? I Did saw her cruise dumping pitchers on her head. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think she was doing more like cold water. Okay, but maybe it was just drying out quick yeah. or something. Um, so, and I don't know if that was like one of her issues was like being overheated or not. I know she got sick at some point, um, but you never know. Um, yeah. And from the chat, Ruth's crew said that they would get into dinosaur costumes if she won. That's the rumor on the show. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Camille, it did not seem like she was – I didn't see her using an ice bandana. I saw – so I saw Tim Tolefson come in through Michigan Bluff looking really rough. And I don't know if it was a foot injury or if it was an issue with overheating. But I honestly, I thought he was going to drop there. I was sitting there watching it, and then he, he ended up getting back. He was in the medical tent He was there for a while, for a while right? Yeah, he's in the yeah. medical tent. I think that's where his race really started unraveling was somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Devil's Thumb, maybe. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it was hot. Yeah, I'm not sure. Obviously, Camille dealt with a, a tough patch, right? Yeah. But she still rallied to finish eighth. Like yeah. that's pretty. That's pretty incredible, and I think getting like, you know, last year she got the full course under her belt, right? And this year she got the full course in a competitive manner. Yeah. Under her belt, and obviously each year will be different, but um, I feel like she's got to be not satisfied with that, but like there are a lot of positives for her to take away from that and a lot of things she can probably learn. Well, yeah, she's already got her ticket to next year's race, so she doesn't mm-hmm. have to like worry about that for a year, which is kind of nice. She's already in, and I'm sure she'll be back. For me, I think seeing her top out up at Devil's Thumb in fourth position just like minutes behind the leaders was like a i think a big moment um that i noticed was like oh wow like that's like most of the way through the mountainous canyon section that mm-hmm. she notoriously ch- struggled with it's on like i thought she was just gonna cruise on like cruise on through and like be right up there with them um didn't pan out this time but you know she's certainly shown like an incredible improvement since last year yeah definitely i thought she you know, ran a, a really good rate. It would have been really easy for her when things started to unravel to just like kind of phone it in a little bit and, you know, just kind of get to the finish. But she kind of regrouped and remained pretty competitive, which I think is a really positive thing to take away from this. We got Bryce uh, nudging us over here, maybe talk about the <laughs> results a little bit. So um, if you if you somehow have been living under a rock, we did have Adam Peterman winning the race in his debut 100 miler oh something i might add there yeah i noticed he's the youngest of the top 50 finishers wow at 26 yeah i mean it's kind of hard to get into this race too (laughs) but yes yeah that's fair yeah yeah i mean it, it that is a good point though to have uh like someone so fast come into the sport at a young age i think is like a pretty good sign of uh, what's ahead. Obviously, like guys like Jim and Hayden came into the sport at a high level early as well. But like Adam Peterman ran at Colorado, has like a pretty stout, you know, track background. And for him to, you know, be coming into the sport in essentially his athletic prime, maybe not even quite there yet, to be honest, I think is uh, is good for the sport. And hopefully we'll get to see him and Jim throw down one day. Yeah. I mean, he could easily be continuing to chase maybe the road scene or something like that right now. Um, but yeah, he's made the transition to trails, which we really appreciate. I think, uh, building new excitement for the sport is extremely important. And I mean, he's a rising star of the sport right now. Um, he ran his first ultra less than a year ago. Look, look at what can happen any of you out there that are listening, I mean, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Like a year ago, I mean, granted, I think he was a little bit on the radar having won the trail, uh, marathon or trail half or trail marathon. I think marathon, right. And I think maybe twice. Yeah. yeah. So he's like dabbling in the trails clearly, but like speed goat 50 K was his first ultra marathon that he had ever run. And so before he ran his first ultra, Like Western States had already happened last year. It's like not even on anyone's radar that this year's winner was even out there. Yeah. That's crazy to think about, but also incredibly inspiring. So, you know, there, there is a path to, you know, I guess a career in the sport, like to go from a collegiate runner who maybe, you know, loves the mountains, loves the trails and, and can cross over and, you know, over the course of a year, make a, make a splash. I mean, he was picked up by Hoka pretty quickly, you know, shout out to Mike McManus on that one. But, um, yeah, I mean, for sure. I think, uh, Adam also maybe dealt with some injuries throughout college, uh, that maybe steered him away from wanting to kind of pursue that side of stuff a little bit more. Um, which I can see, I mean, it's could be a common theme, I think for a yeah. lot of people that probably end up down this road. I mean, you get on the trails, you build up your strength, you could become more resilient in many ways. So pretty awesome to see. It'll be fun to see where he goes next. I believe with this win, he earned himself an entry into the 2023 UTMB. 
and I believe he's signed up for CCC this year as long as his recovery goes well. So it'd be fun to see what he can do over in the, the European mountains. And we might see, a that could be your Jim versus, uh, Adam. Sorry. <laughs> you can just refer to him as Peter God, as David Roach refers to him as. Wasn't there a baby man or something or Peter? Some, oh. some, they were saying that in the live stream, Peter baby. Well, yeah, I mean, his name he's so apparently young. was... I think it was a little bit... Baby o- Cheeks or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it was a little overused, Debo, <laughs> no offense, like in the in the live stream. <laughs> I just like call people out on this podcast. Um, but he was like, oh, he's so young. He's a kid. I'm like, yeah, but like, I don't know, like Cody Lind is 27. Like, would you call him a kid? No, but it's like similar. Not because he's been... Cody Lind has been around Western states since 26. he was in diapers. Yeah. You well, know? yeah, but, and like, yeah, Jared Hazen's 27. Like they're like the same age, basically. Yeah. I don't know, but I, I came in the sport early. So I'm like, and I didn't even feel, I didn't even feel like a kid when I came in. I was like, whatever. Age is age out here. It is age what it is. Age is just a number. So it's all good. They're little kids. Also, how about the, uh, the last like two weeks the University of Colorado has had on the trail scene? You got tell me tell adam me. peterman oh yeah you've got uh um uh, ally mack she's a, a tearing it up tabor hemming also a colorado alumni i didn't realize and alex nichols is now head coach at co- uh like colorado community uh what, what was it colorado, uh, like colorado college yeah colorado, oh, colorado college. college so it's not the university um still and then why still can't awesome. i think of andy wacker also andy a, wacker also oh. a colorado alumni so. um sick yeah great great races we had an incredibly close third place finish for third Mm. which was nuts arlen glick was holding off tyler green by less than a minute 53 seconds yep that's pretty sick and he described a pretty rough patch for like 20 miles during his race so (laughs) you got to think that like he's got more in him at this race are you talking about Arlen or Tyler? Arlen. 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 Arlen had the rough patch. I think Tyler was pretty much, he looked, I think, pretty good all day. Well, I think he just left it all out there. Yeah. Too, right? no, he like did when say he got that. done, he was. Yeah, he did he, say that. It's not like he was holding back. Yeah. Um, I think he put he gave it everything and he was satisfied. Obviously, I think he was disappointed. And I think Hayden was, <clears throat> you could tell, was really quite disappointed just that it's kind of like you come so close. Well, I think Hayden in his post-race interview, um, I think said something that was really like you could, it was, it was very sombering hearing him talk because you could tell he was like really hurt that he wasn't able to win. But he basically said like, I ran as co- good as I could have today. And, and it just beat. wasn't yeah. good enough. Right. Yeah, and he recognized that. And so that was really cool. And for, for it to, I guess, for him to, like, lose to Adam, of all people, is probably a, a little bit better for him. Like, someone he talks with about, uh, like, hunting and fly fishing and all of this stuff. And um, But you could definitely tell that it was a little bit tough for him knowing that, you know, he left everything out there. He did everything he could. And it just wasn't good enough on that day. We played it patient. <clears throat> he was in the lead, you know, and it's tough. It's a tough thing. And, you know, this is his career. Yeah. And wh- there's no, you know, really maybe no bigger win than Western States 100 for a North American athlete. Yeah. And, I mean, he he ran such a good race, too. And yeah. It, you know? Still, I mean, a 1547, incredible time. But yeah, I mean, those top four guys, even Arlen, I mean, having a 20 mile rough patch, I mean, how much time you lose on that? Like you could lose a lot of time. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Moving on down, um, to the women's race. I mean, Ruth Croft, one of the fastest all time out here now. Um, if you go to the top performances for the women. Oh, uh, one thing I wanted to note for Elsa is I didn't know this, but she does not believe in pacers. Interesting. El- Elsa McDonald's does not believe in Pacers whatsoever. So she's yeah, Elsa McDonald. So huge shout out to her. She came onto the radar for me, Black Canyon, a bunch of years ago, um, where she missed missed a ticket by one, and then came back and set the course record the next year. Like just a statement performance, really. Um, and I think that is maybe the ticket that rolled ahead 
to get her this, I can't remember maybe this entry, possibly not, but um, you can see up here in our all time, Ruth Croft, third fastest all time. Ruth also has the sixth fastest all time. And then Elsa McDonald, talk about entering the history books, 10th all time performance right there. Like such an underrated runner. I don't think gets the attention she deserves, you know, Canadian athlete. Um, but yeah, I mean, 10th all time Western States. Hello. Big time. Well, second and third, both Canadian athletes. So yeah, Mary Shout out to our neighbors to the north. She was moving up. I don't think she was on the radar early in the no, race. She and moved just up kind so of well built late. up. There was a lot of movement there in in the women's race. You know, we had what early on Ruth and Emily Hoggood were like neck and neck, lot like super exciting women's race, I think, where you see them like working together. They're all rallying. I think her and Keeley and those two were all together on camera at Devil's Thumb, which was such a moment because, you know, the fact that they had the service to get that image out there, kudos to the team for making that happen. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's what we strive mm -hmm. for. It's like, even if we can just get a scrap of service and get a couple pictures, a moving picture out there, like that's what it is, it's a moving yeah. picture, is uh, like that moment that they could share that live with the world is just so cool. Yeah, well, I mean, that moment is why we do this, you know? It's like to be able to showcase these super remote areas that only people who have uh, run run or crewed or paced or volunteered at the race have, have experienced, which is really cool. And then let's see, moving on up, we have, yeah, just a mix, huge international field. The women came through on the front end there, the top five spots. Um we had Anne Marie Madden in that, that tough, tough 11th position. But again, it's like you give your all and you end up 11th. Same with uh, Jeff Colt on the men's side. You know, they're like, came for what experience at Western States. We earned our golden tickets. We ended up 11th. That's, you know, it is what it is sometimes. Yeah. No, I think that both Anne Marie and Jeff had uh, really great performances and have a lot to be proud of with, you know, the way they ran and the way they competed uh, over the weekend. And then a couple others to make note of here, um, you know, athletes that had high aspirations, the race didn't go to plan, but they stuck it out. So I think Tim Tollefson and Brittany Peterson got a shout out both of them for just enduring, you know, way beyond their potential when it would have been perfectly, I think, acceptable um, to call it and be like, I'm going to save it for whatever race is coming up. But I think Tim shared, he had, I think his nephew out on course with a sign that was like, never give up. And he's like, he kept going back to that sign and he's like, kind of like, I got to do it. I got to do it for him. And, yeah. and that was pretty cool to hear about that story. Yeah, no, for sure. Shout out to, to both of uh, those individuals, both Brittany and Tim. I think that, you know, sometimes just enduring uh, is a, is a victory in and of itself. Well, and even Dominika Stelmach, who was leading the race early, um, I didn't hear how her race played out, but clearly, you know, off her potential with like a 22 hour finish there. Um, and then we got to shout out Casey Lichtai coming back after an injury, you know, getting it done sub 24, you know, obviously not where she would be in a normal year. A healthy Casey would likely be in the top 10. I think she has been most every other year, mm -hmm. but, um, it's, a great comeback story and I think you know uh, a sign of hope for anyone out there that is struggling with with some sort of an injury and facing a surgery of some kind that you know mm. your the future of your running may come into question at some point and and look you can you can overcome yeah such a such an inspirational story and awesome to see her uh, get to the finish line and to to get there under 24 hours. Nice. Well, interesting note here from Buckeye Jen. Uh, she's just pointing out, Arlen said he was doing great on calories until the aid stations where his crew could not meet him. Thinks the fluid he was given was watered down. He got behind on calories. And then I guess he was able to meet back up with the Darlins at Forest Hill. <laughs> and I think after that, he's probably feeling a little better. 
Dude, kudos on weaving that in. Nice. Thank you. Arlen's we, Darlins. We got a shout out. Where where did Arlen's Darlins come from? Because they were using that a lot on the live stream. Yeah. Any, any insights for <clears throat> us here, man? Well, it was definitely an Arrow Viper live stream. So Corinne <laughs> and Dylan, uh, you're welcome, first and foremost. Uh, Billy, for providing you with the great tagline, you're also welcome. Uh, I can't remember... <laughs> Uh, I can't remember which uh, live stream it was. It was crowdsourced, so it wasn't my well, it idea. Was either, that came up. I believe it was either it was Havelina, Solstice. Havelina, Solstice, or Jackpot. It was before Jackpot. Okay. I'm almost, I think it was Solstice. Okay. Um, Help us out in the chat, please. Well, someone Go in the chat the is probably the person who came up with it uh, and yeah. probably deserves exactly. some royalties right. or something like that, you know? So. <laughs> No, Arlen's Darwin's. I, I'm glad that everyone else appreciates that uh, that catchphrase as much as I do. So, But yeah, that's a good lesson learned, though. I think, you know, you don't always know how that pitcher is going to be mixed up in the aid stations. Is that going to have the right caloric mix? You hope, but you never know. So I think planning for that is, is important, especially as an elite. You know, having what you need nutritionally, especially if you know they're not going to have it at the aid stations, can be the difference between... I don't know, a win in third or second and third. So yeah. uh, anything could happen there. I want to follow up on a couple of stories we talked about two weeks ago. Um, I don't know if I remember all of them. Maybe you guys can help remember, but Megan Canfield was one. So she was a special consideration entry and she was shooting to break Diana Fitzpatrick's record, which I think was just under 24 hours. And I believe she just missed it. Or missed it by about an hour. She, ran she did finish, though. So I didn't stay up long enough for her to finish or, I guess, wake back up in time for her to finish. But um, shout out to her. And then Jim Howard. I was waiting for this one. I did tune in for the golden hour. And shout out to Troy Wicks, the drone operator at Western this weekend. I yeah. think lone drone operator. The esteemed drone Our pilot. boy trained through... The tested waters of the Air Viper live streams. We're just going to give ourselves all the kudos. Uh, just kidding. But um, Troy is amazing. And shout out to him for getting out there. And, and Billy for trusting the live stream with Troy is really, really awesome. But um, I think he did not. Jim Howard did not make it. Um, I think he made it to Pointed Rocks and then ran out of time. So kind of a, a bummer. It would have been fun to you know, be rooting him on with like two minutes to go down to the wire. There weren't any last minute finishes this year. I think it was about four minutes to spare was the final finisher. And mm -hmm. um, they did have, uh, you know, at least one not too far over the cutoff. So she came through about two minutes over the 30 hour mm -hmm. cutoff, which is tough. Not as dramatic as an on the track make or miss, but um, I think Jennifer is her name. Um, they, it was cool. They brought her directly onto the live and got a little bit of her story. She had been diagnosed with like an incurable cancer. Um, and then, uh, it's, I guess maybe not been detected in a few years, but she attributes running to some of her, uh, where she's at today. So nice. she says she hopes to be back. Awesome. Well, we got a question from the chat. How come Western States does not use spot trackers like you do in Cocodona? Um, so I think a couple of reasons, I think number one, it's a newer technology that has mostly started to be coming standard in these 200 mile races. They are quite expensive. Um, they're about $50 per unit to rent for the race weekend. So, um, or the race week. So they're, they're very pricey. So it's, it's a big investment on the race end of things. And although it's it's obviously awesome to watch the play-by-play, -play, one of the main reasons that we use it for Cocodona and then, and the other 200s do in a race like Hard Rock is runner safety. So like we need to know exactly where these folks are at all times. If they haven't moved in a while, their last known location. Western states, as far as safety and runner tracking goes, they're pretty set. I mean, they've got 21 aid stations. So every, on average five miles yeah. or less they have an aid station it's not hard to track and know when a runner is in distress they've got ham radio operators everywhere um so that's a that's a reason where like they can't justify using it there 
And then I think for the runner tracking, even they're tracking the runners through every aid station with their volunteer team. So, I mean, I know it's not as real time as you would like, but I think that's another reason, like just the cost of it. And then I honestly think too, it's a little bit maybe against the ethos of the race, like requiring runners to have to wear this extra device and have it like oriented and put it on your pack. Um, you know, a lot of people are just running with hand bottles out of Western States. It's kind of part of the culture of like California running free type of a thing. And I think, you know, there's not a required gear list at Western States 100. And I don't know that there ever will be Mm -hmm. even in the heat. They don't say, Oh, you know, pull out your three liter bladder. Let me check to see how many pieces of ice you have or pounds of ice you have in your, your bandana. You just kind of have to choose for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's probably the biggest reason, right, is that it doesn't speak to, yeah, the ethos of the story of the race um, versus, like, some of these other races, you know? I mean, I don't know that the financial component they could is certainly it. Like, over, they, could, they could certainly overcome it. Yeah. yeah. But, but I, it is, like, it adds up. I mean, yeah. 50 bucks times 400 runners, it's a big investment from yeah. the race, and I think they would rather put their money into something else. For sure. For sure. Or like requiring the runners to pay an additional $50 for this, you know, like what, what value do the runners get? They're just going to be annoyed probably. Yeah, for sure. So plus to be honest, we even see it. I think at Cocodona, sometimes the way that they update is like a leapfrog. Yeah. So like, I honestly think it would maybe introduce even more confusion where like they're, they're so close, but they're pinging at different times. So you might have an inaccuracy. Yep. Um, uh, that's, there's a, we got a few questions in here, but most that are not related directly to Western States. Hmm. So I'm just, I'm hanging on. Nice. Anything else on Western? Um, how do we do on our fantasy free trail? Oh yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we all did pretty terribly, uh, <laughs> um, but I did less Jerry terribly Hayes and than dropping everyone. did not help my cause. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, and I, not winning. I picked Jared to win. Um, let's see because Flagstaff, obviously. Um, and he did not. And so I actually had it, Tim <clears throat> Tollison. It also, I'm not, a the scoring, the scoring. Wait. I just don't love the scoring still. Oh, like I had actually, no, let me look mine up. So who did you have for your winners? Jared and Camille. Okay. I picked not in the correct order, but I had seven of the top 10 finishers in the top 10. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, ah. I also I, had Jared and Camille. Who would you have? Uh, you had Pete Mortimer and Tessa Chesser. <laughs> I'd have to look. I, I, I did. I get. I think I got Ruth Croft right for the women's. Ooh, that's a big. That's a big pickup. On and the women's side, though, I did not. Not good. I should have moved the women up because I had Ruth in second, Elsa in third. But I don't know if I got compensated. Mm. The then so you had two of the top three. I was like, right, exactly. So mm. I don't think I was compensated for those well. Um, Arlen, I picked third and he got third. I had Hayden second and he got second. Nice. And I had, but again, there's no, like you don't get points for that. Do you? Yeah. Or you you get, if you pick the exact place, Oh, you do. You get points. Okay. But yeah, because I had Hayden fourth and he got second. Nothing. Nothing. I think. All right. Well, so Matt was in. 390th place. Let's go. Tied with 80 other people <laughs> at 96 points. Jamil was 684. <laughs> <laughs> Fell way back. <laughs> I was 618. So Ooh. Matt won pretty handedly. Nice. But only 14 points. <laughs> you know, I only had 14 more points than you. Why are you pointing that out? Just take the win. Take well, it, I Matt. still won. <laughs> it doesn't matter how how bad you beat someone. Look at that one. See, I want to see what me Joey. By... I want to see jo- Zoe Jacobs picks three hundred one points. She killed it on the men's side. Devin did much more balanced between the two. Oh, Ben Cook in the chat saying that uh, Zoe and Heidi, first and third, are both Flagstaff residents. Hey, uh, the inside scoop. But hey, 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 actually. How do they get? How do they get so many points on the men's side? That must mean they picked against Jared Hazen, the Flagstaff native. They knew. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm they not knew saying something. 
But I'm I mean, just Jared saying, looked good until he didn't look good. Yeah, but Flagstaff versus the world. So. Skyler. A of Skyler's been in the chat a little bit today. I beat Jamil Bryce. <laughs> and Bry- oh, oh, yeah, look up Skyler. <clears throat> Wait, but Skyler doesn't count. It doesn't count if you're a part of the broadcast. That's all Do I got to say. Oh, yeah. yep. oh, shout out to Lottie Brinks. I saw her name up there. 16. Oh, Skyler. Oh, buddy. You saw Lottie in there? Yeah. Yeah. 16. Oh, oh she crushed go. it. She did well. Scroll up and see if we recognize any other names. <laughs> oh, there's up Ben there. Cook. Jeremy Pope. Oh, shout out to the Montana. Sarah Kyes. No John Bodwin this time that I see. I can't win them all. Huh. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the free trail. Um, I thought this is a transition here for you. I thought we were going to see all the Golden Trail Series races on Fantasy Free Trail. Was I mistaken? Do you remember that? Wait, what, you, what say it again? The golden trail world series i thought all of the golden trail world series races were going to be on fantasy that sounds right is it because we did zagama at first but marathon mont blanc wasn't on here so just put it out there we would love to see all we the need rest more is we what want you're we yeah like i would have loved to see marathon mont blanc but i can see western states being a lot of work so well, it doesn't look like there's any other so I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. It'd be great if we could get more Golden Trail World Series events onto the fantasy roster here. Um, if there's anything we can do to help, let us know. Uh, pull We're just itching. Or, We're just itching for, itching it, you for know? it. You know? All right. So the next one, I guess, is going to be the Hard Rock 100. Are you in yet or what? <laughs> no, we can talk about that, though, real like, are briefly. You gonna, are you training? Well, I did, I did just get sick, so I am now getting I'm on the mend um that was like a minor setback for last week but uh pull it up pull up the wait list here there was some movement so there was movement this last week there was the service forms were due for hard Mm -hmm. rock and so even if you're on the wait list you have to turn your service form in because otherwise they don't know if you've done it and you can't run the race and so that cleared some people but no one ahead of me on my wait list. So a lot of the veterans know to get it in, but it did clear a lot of the wait list behind. So a lot of people just didn't do it and they got erased. So the la- the lists are quite short now. Oh, <gasps> you're in. No, I'm next up. So has your and brother the dropped female yet? vets are gone. Has your brother dropped yet? No. Oh my God. <laughs> This is, this is a live reaction. <laughs> <laughs> no, I swear. I just checked. I just checked this yesterday, but and it really? wasn't. And I wasn't. I didn't move up at all. There were two people ahead of me. So if Nick is I'm out, next. you're in. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, one hundred percent. Because he's still on the entrance list, and I am next up. There's only two veterans left on the wait list. <laughs> me and Phil Wiley, and then there's no one. So then those next spots would then go to the other lotteries. I think. Sorry, I'm getting all just seeing the reaction on your face was so epic. because I wasn't expecting it. I was I saw there was a lot of movement. There was three people got in like yesterday, but it was all from the other list. The female vet list cleared. And then I think some of the other lists like Brian Powell is now next in for the male else. All right. Uh, probably running hard rock. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> who, who has a better chance at finishing right now, you or your brother Nick? I haven't talked to him in a week, so I don't know how his foot's doing. But I mean, I'd say me because I'm healthy. And I feel great. I just have very little training. But <gasps> this is awesome! Yeah. All right, <laughs> live TV. Ladies New and YouTube gentlemen. series coming. What, what am I going to call? I was calling it the uh, becoming a true hard rocker. What do you think? Live reaction. You're like, sucks. Uh, well, I think having Hard Rock in the title is probably good. Um, seems a bit wordy. Becoming a true hard rocker? Yeah. Do you know the meaning of it? But you already are a true hard rocker. No, I'm not. Why? To become a true hard rocker, you must finish it in both directions. Clockwise oh, will this and be the first year you've run the opposite direction? Oh, because in even year, you've only run odd years. I have five finishes in the odd direction. <laughs> so I'm not a true hard rocker, technically. 
I think it's great then. Great. Congrats, Jamil. You just had to explain it. <laughs> we'll keep you updated on this. <laughs> might have to do it like I might have to just go live. Like when I find out, I'll just like pop into like a run steep get high live. Well, YouTube you could video. you could plan it. I you could just have Nick. Hard rock and I'm just have crying. Nick in studio. Well, I mean, it, what if you both are running? Well, that could also still happen. Yeah, that could happen. I, someone I keep else throwing could Nick out. under the bus like, oh, he's not running. Nick well, now could... I'm going to go, now I want to go to their Facebook and see like who, if they announced who else got in. Otherwise, if they're pulling from the list, I guess they wouldn't pull names until they like figure out replacements. But they're dropping like flies right now, people. All right. That was a random aside. Back on track. Love it. Um, <laughs> one no, more welcome awesome. today. Rick Hodges is ready to pounce. Step up to the start line. Male vets keep on stepping. Shout out Rick. So they, yeah, there were two ahead of me. So that must mean one of them declined and then Rick, and I knew Rick would take the spot. So he is going for his 15th finish. Oh my gosh. Look how happy he is here in this photo. He's like (laughs) squatting in front of a cave. (laughs) Anyways, yeah. Um, so Marathon Mont Blanc, uh, briefly, let's talk about that and let's get into some Q&A and then get our rapid fire round so we can get you back up to the beautiful city of Flagstaff, Mr. Feldake. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the big takeaways for me was uh, David Magnini. How do you pronounce Magnini. the last name? Magnini. Magnini. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Team Solomon. So you should know. Uh, runner up again. I believe he was second. Jonathan Albin won. Yeah. Dude, that guy is an absolute beast. Do you know yep. much about him? Not a lot. He was like dominating at, I think, some of the OCR stuff on the like mm. world level. He won, the year I went out to the World Trail Running Championship, he won that. He is an, he's from the UK. He's an absolute beast. Um, I forget how many of these Golden Trail races he's done, but he, it's exciting. Like he is legit good. Go ahead. Sorry. I just wanted to recognize the winner. Yeah. And I mean, a pretty decisive way. I mean, one by four minutes and 21 seconds as well. So, I mean, pretty, pretty decisive Roy, uh, Roy Ueda, um, who also ran Zagama. He was just in third, just about a minute behind, uh, David. So, this course, oh, well, oh, this is a hard rock. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is slarb. Um, <laughs> dude, I mean, Chamonix <clears throat> is is like there's a reason like Mont Blanc, UOTMB became what it was. Like it's incredible area, like one of the most beautiful places to run through those three countries around that massive. But this race is in Chamonix. It's the same start finish line as UTMB. Like it starts at the same exact spot. Um, this race predated UTMB by quite a bit. I think quite mm-hmm. a few years. Yeah, um, but it. It definitely runs on some of the same trails. Just so beautiful. I mean, seeing some of the imagery from the live stream, I don't know if you scrubbed through it at all. Yeah, I saw some, yeah. And some of the ridges and drone shots up there with Mont Blanc behind. I mean, here we go. it is. Oh, okay. So this is like the, oh, this is a couple years ago, but like, yeah, I mean. 2019, I, I think. mean, it's, un- it's unbelievable. That wasn't from, from Mont Blanc, but um you could go maybe pull up some of the live stuff from this year if you can yeah like from the golden trail series um they put together a great yeah great broadcast and go through like early on it's pretty boring honestly it's like just running to get to the first climb Mm -hmm. so just running on these like bike paths super fast running though it gives me a similar vibe to UT, how UTMB kind of starts. I'm not sure that they're on yeah. the same trail. It's like but the you opposite kind of get, direction. You're kind of running up the valley in a different way. Yeah. But you yeah. kind of get into like, oh these my more God. Bike yes. Trails. Yes. Yes. This is almost like the last, this looks like the last climb of UTMB almost. But I mean, this is just like, it looks like a freaking picture back here. It is so spectacular. This ridge they're running up with the drone shot. Like, mm. this is great live mm. streaming content right here, folks. And it's, I mean, this isn't. This actually isn't super clear, so that makes me feel better. But that is no, crispy. But that is look at way... this. Just ah, uh, that's pretty clear. It's pretty. That's actually really. It's really. I good. mean, it's not. Maybe yeah. it's our. It's probably our connection here on the blown up on like the it, screen. But these people down in here look pretty. This is exactly the. You're good, Bryce. <laughs> you are real good because this is exactly the scene that I wanted pulled up here. It is like <laughs> it is unbelievably beautiful. 
and you're like an hour and a half in and you came from way down there. Like that's Mont Blanc shrouded in clouds, the glaciers coming down into the Chamonix Valley. They ran all the way through here and then they're running up like up this ridge and then they're going to drop down into this valley to like Valarcine. Then they're going to climb up this other mountain past Ibexes and stuff like the goats. Yeah. It is. And there's people cheering. This is amazing. Incredible. So epic. I'm jealous of you, Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you need to go have a visit with the Maricopa. Put Marauder me on himself. team team golden trail. I'll come and fly a drone for you. <laughs> Bring me over. Let's do it. Matt will come commentate and whip up some fire phrases for you. Well, oh, can, look at these guys go. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, this is, this is great content here. Oh God. Yes. Just shut it down. How do you I, think they're running this drone right now? Off satellite or off? No, off cell. Cell? Yeah, I would uh, imagine. Or like, yeah, probably off. The chat was saying cell. Uh, cell service in the entire Chamonix Valley is very good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a little glitchy, but like, it would I mean, be like if we had if we had good cell phone coverage here, we can get imagery like this. If not, yeah, <clears throat> definitely equal. This is basically, you know, the sunset trail across Eldon there. God, basically, look at it. Let's just look at this. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You're kidding me? Oh man. And, and I mean, they have. I mean, some of the best, the best content creators in the game are are over here. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, look at these guys. Dude, when you cook. get that shot, you're like, I got the money shot here. This is great. Oh, it's taking a little bit of a different path. This is yeah. the Euro style, you yeah. know? It's like, we're not doing the switchbacks. We just go. You can really see it in action here where they're just kind of like, there's like multiple paths, not switchbacks. They're just going down. I wouldn't call that a switchback. It's just a deviation. Yeah. God, great cinematography here. Oh. And then you bounce to that first person perspective. Yeah, I mean, see, this is what is it. And look think, at it. They got the little leader thing <clears throat> yeah, here. Yeah, well, this and this gives just... you more perspective, so you couldn't really see. The drone shot's beautiful, obviously. You so can't it's... see how technical the trail is from the drone. Yeah. And so when you bring in this, like, POV perspective, uh, you're really able to see, like, the trail and the intricacies there. The other thing I on. like is full screen picture mm. viewing with, like, a little bit of the information is there, but it's, like, a little low key. Mm. We really dig that. Well, I mean, that overlay there is sick. Great overlay. You've got the kilometer here. You've got the name of the area. Look, and it switched camera views, and it went right to the current kilometer. Like, mm. these are, like, the details of, like, TV production quality stuff here. And guys that have been, I mean, they've been broadcasting this race for a few years now. They yeah. know what's up. Yeah. It's it more and more dialed over time. God, look at this stuff. This is incredible. I want to run this race. I might have to go on tour. Run the tour. I need to get... In shape oh, Hard Rock bit. will be the kicking off point. Kick right? off. You're going to jump start you. Next on the list. What? <laughs> You're less than three weeks away. It's like, two, isn't it like two, two weeks? Two and a half. It's like two and a half weeks? No. Yeah. 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 Because this weekend, then yeah, the following like one and a half days. is Kendall. It's Friday morning, too. It's a Friday start. Jeez. This would be like in a normal. Well, year, you're not I'd, in yet, though. I'm I'm in, basically. Well, we don't know. Yeah, you're right. We got to see how Nick's foot's doing. Should we just call him up? Yeah, you should. <laughs> Live on air. <laughs> Say, hey, bro, <laughs> are you gonna run Hard Rock or are you gonna let me? Yeah, I'll, Dude, I'll these call drone him shots too. are sick. This is in this is incredible. Let's see, God, wanna... look at that. Yeah. Do we want to take a few questions from the chat here? I just want to like have some beers with the team over there, you know, like after and just talk live stream and compare like our best shots, like over an evening, you know, that'd be a good time. I'll help them come up with uh, like taglines or catchphrases, you know, this is amazing. Sorry. Yeah. We're, we're, we're questions. just having a moment over here, Bryce, oh, yeah. like geeking out over these live streams. Let's pick think, our jaws back up. Yeah, I think this, but yeah, like I was saying before, I'm like, I'm all like, oh my God, we got to make Flagstaff Sky Peaks live stream incredible. And that's what made me think. I was like, man, I wish we, I wish that race started like in a t in town. Like maybe you did have like a, 
I'm like, how far would you have to run? Like four miles? Like, could we start in downtown, run four miles, Up then blue do the thing, Up blue dot. and then come back? Just like, that's what they do, basically. Like, they're in town, they run out, they do a crazy thing, and then back. But it is what it well, is. Well, this is also a 42K. Yeah, but I'm like, great, make it a 42K. I mean... See what I'm saying? You now do you see it. what I'm talking? You could do it. Yeah. So hmm. we just, I just we... like I want to give people like I want to give the folks that are coming here like the like the best experience possible, right? <clears throat> I don't know if that me I don't know if that like adds a lot starting in the town square. Like I don't think we could get all the way to maybe Heritage Square. Maybe. But maybe if you went up Eldon instead of Well, I think that would add too much. I think it would be more like a what 50. a mile. Unless you ended like a point to point. Yeah. Because like Zagama does that. Oh, shoot. Interesting. What if you ended? Uh, you end where you in end. In Buff Park. I don't know. But no, but you couldn't, because we want to do the snowball, the snowball climb. Mm. It's too oh, far apart geographically. You could end Oh, you could there. definitely do it. I've got a route mapped up from my house that some Well, that's Elden what the race used and... to be. We used to go up Eldon, the old US Skyrunner series. Mm-hmm. We'd go up Eldon, across... And then finish mm. with the climb and, and end there. Probably the year that you did it or something. No, no, it was started in Snowball, but with Weatherford probably being... We didn't use Weatherford because uh, that's... Um, we did oh, Weatherford, yeah. but the cut down. But yeah, it would it would be harder because of the fire. Yep. So, yeah. Anyways, we're way too distracted right now. <laughs> let's, uh, we, can do, we can do a wrap. Let's, let's, let's move on. All right. Q&A? Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to start from towards the top here. Uh, <laughs> we just get rolling. I don't know. Roll. I don't. I don't see in the chat now. One of the questions was, "Do you think Ireland's going to be taken seriously by like shoe sponsors, or have basically just be taken more seriously now that he's got podium at Western?" He currently has one main sponsor. It is you are running. Or you something. are running. Are you running? Yes, and they are like a. I don't know, some sort of like a registration company maybe. Yeah. Do you want my like feelings on it or what I think will actually happen? It's a talk show. I don't know. I don't think. Okay. Why? So because I I think that there are other things that most major brands currently value more, which I think, which I think is a travesty. Um, and I think that even going into this, him not having a major footwear sponsor was shameful, uh, to be quite frank. But I think that it's hard for a lot of brands to... Is it being like that support. Midwest runner and like not getting well, like that, the, it's the amount you deserve? Presence, like it's right. If like, we looked I think at... there are a lot of things that brands value, right? And I think it's hard to get you know, the content that they want and these kinds of things in Illinois and Indiana and Ohio and in Michigan. And that so is like a, a Casey Lick tie was, you know, was picked up at some point being a Midwest runner mm-hmm. running flatter, but maybe having success at Western. Certainly. I think he's a step closer. Yeah. 100%. Like, or a and lot I think of steps closer. Should. And like, I think that he should be him sponsored. getting, yeah, him getting like, I think that was the right move for an Arlen Glick because I think it can be tough. It can be frankly tough in the Midwest and even East Coast to get that attention. Like there's so much on Western states. I mean, here we are three out of four weeks talking about Western states. I mean, it is fun to talk about, but like there's a lot of people interested in like, mm. yo, we do pull more views if we put Western states in the title here. Like I'll be honest with you. Um, but it also is like a fun topic and it does bring a lot together. We got to talk about it. We want to talk about it. We want to weave it into the storyline, but there's also a lot of other amazing stories to talk about the other like 50 weeks out of the year as well. Mm. Um, well, I think look at the camera again. Sorry. I think that he paused that. I think that he more than deserves to be sponsored. I want that to be clear. I think though that like he won Havelina. Like he pre- he should have been sponsored. Havelina Solstice, uh, USATF national championship, podium at Western States. I mean, yeah. What is the guy amongst have to do? his uh, myriad of yeah, other being trail a dom- races basically that he's being dominant at the hundred mile distance? Well, this is the for first time he's lost at a hundred mile distance to a uh, to a male since Taggart Van Etten beat him. Yeah. His second loss ever. Yeah. Well, well, Camille. Camille beat him. <laughs> yes. 
Um, so yeah, I guess time will tell, but we'll keep pumping the Arlen brand love as Arlen. hard as we can. Love Arwen. Love Arwen's Darwins. Love it all. Uh, hey, Matt. Yep. Where can somebody find the 4th of July run high, get steep shirts? Well, run steep, get high. Oh, my gosh. First off, Brett. Uh, <laughs> I'm losing my Brett. mind. Uh, Shop.mountainoutpost.com. Cool. I'll be we right should there. have it in the show notes. Maybe we'll make sure we link to our store. We have we have the Mountain Outpost uh, brand shop, and that has all of our shopping. So uh, it's kind of nice because if you want something from Run Steep Get High or Cocodona or Havelina or Aravipa, it's all under one mm-hmm. shopping experience. So you can like add up a bunch of products, and it's going to save you on shipping. So that's one of the main reasons that we did it. It might seem a little confusing at first, but you know, um, we wanted to kind of. That is the reasoning behind it. So if you want to pick up anything from any of our brands, it's all in one place. Correct. What 50-mile Aravipa race would you guys recommend for the end of spring 2023? And then I saw another comment in here. He said, or uh, winter of 2022. My first gut reaction was the shirt I'm wearing. McDowell Mountain Frenzy has a pretty awesome 50-miler. Yeah, if winter time is the game, is it for like a first 50-miler? Or just in general? I think it's just in general. Yeah, Frenzy 50 Mile is great. It's almost a single loop 50 mile. It's the same park as Havelina 100. You get to explore more of the park. And it's nicer weather. It's a great time. I really like that race. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as if it wasn't that one. Elephant Mountain. Or oh, not. Elephant Mountain, man. If you want a little bit more rugged race... Elephant Mountain 50 miler, one of my favorites. That was the first place that I ever did. Like, I would say it was like an ultra distance trail run. It was really a 25 miler, but it ran like a 50 K or longer. The Tonto national forest is tough stream crossings, remote. So cool. While still being runnable while runnable. And like, you know, basically you start on the furthest outskirts of Phoenix. Like you're still connected to the greater Metro Phoenix area. But you get out there and you feel like you've really gone somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Any news on the guy pushing the pee up the hill? I believe it was a peanut. I think yeah, he hasn't started not yet. yet. Okay, it's like I think the eighth of July. Mm-hmm. I've got it. I'm gonna mark it on my calendar mm-hmm. if it's not already there. <laughs> All right, let's see. And then let's see if any more came in here. Skyler called you old earlier. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I was like saying, oh, 26 isn't a kid. It's like, <laughs> I'm fucking old. <laughs> Still in my prime, baby. Uh, if Nick Curry runs states, does he get a top 10 finish in his debut? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. No Health, questions Healthy asked. Nick Curry? Healthy, no questions asked. Definitely. Uh, which of the Flagstaff Sky Peaks <clears throat> races will be streamed? Is it only the 26K? Only the 26K for this year. That's the focus. That is the Golden Trail Series race. So, um, And I will say that we are working on an alternate for the 50 miler. We have a backup option we've submitted to the Forest Service. We have a lot of people signed up for the 50 miler. So we will have an epic course for you in Flagstaff with plenty of views and climbing. So, Yeah, I mean, there's not a not a place in Flagstaff that not isn't a shortage. beautiful. So. Yeah. Although I hear it's all closed down for you right now. So... Hopefully we get some more rain and you can get back out there. I'm hoping uh, after this next holiday. So that, this uh, sounds, some sounds stuff about be, right. They probably need some to stuff it, will be open. Keep it closed another week and then let's see where we get. Yeah, I mean, I think some of like the big forest areas closer to where the fire was and possibly even like the Elden area may be closed for a while. Um, see how the rains affect it. Because that's yeah, the last thing like, you want is people out there in a flood zone right now stuff south of like the canyons south of flagstaff are also closed because national forest land so yeah it is what it is they're already it's already flooding this past weekend i heard there was a watch was there any imagery out of there sunday yeah it poured some of the places that were downstream of the pipeline fire some of the houses got uh flooded out yep um but this is also a pretty good segment to the next question and then also to the quick takes what happened to true heart uh, we know what happened to True Heart as far as why he wasn't at Western. We haven't see, heard any updates about. Oh, I heard an update. You heard an update? This Sunday, True Heart Brown oh. entered the Black Canyon 100K. No way. 2023. <laughs> He's in. That's awesome. So, what do you think is on his mind? 
But should he? Should he have to do that? He can. He definitely can. I hope he wins. And he will. You know, I hope he sets a course record. To be honest. And speaking, I mean, yes, they there could be a special consideration. He can't bank on that. No, of he's got to. He's got to. He he's going to do what he did again. Plus, I mean, it, he's going to he run care. it anyway. Like he's he got to get care. a good good effort in. So. So this is uh, one of my quick takes, actually, Matt. If you could look at the map and confirm for me that that is Weatherford Trail. Uh, you'd have to zoom in. It looks like Weatherford, though. Zoom in. Yeah. This yeah, it is. Weatherford. Okay. Oh, yeah. He went out there. Yeah. So he's, he's got pictures. Out. Yeah, he, well, he uploaded a bunch of pictures. Well, he's probably working. allowed to. Oh. So wow. I'll go oh, through is these. This is good oh. find, Bryce. <gasps> oh. I can see that from my house. Dude. Oh, oh there's a little. Okay. Go back. So this is right before the saddle, I believe, maybe. <clears throat> Man, it's just completely torched. I mean, you, with, you had, it had to have been with the size of those flames. A little bit down there in the Aspens. Oh, fuck. So that's actually his, like, fire radio going off. Oh, my God. There's actually, in this video, if you look closely, there's still smoke coming off the hill. <laughs> so he's probably doing a scouting run to right look at the there. smoke. Right there. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, I remember I had seen a report that there was it's stuff p- still smoldering up there, but they didn't want to, it was contained, and they didn't want to send crews. Dude, because that's rugged. scorched earth, man. <clears throat> that is scorched earth. And all those trees are going to fall over the next 20 years. Yep. Like They're going to keep falling and falling and falling. That trail is going to be, that, that. Weatherford is an old road, as you can see, like a road cut. That's going to be decimated. So, yeah, a little sad, but shout Higher out to True Heart. A little. Thank you for Yeah, I mean, what a, what yeah, a so huge asset. Like he, got, for, he got right to the saddle. Yeah, like, so those final photos were like, it kind of yeah. stopped right there. But the whole middle part is devastated. What a huge asset for like him to be a runner and like be able to just scoot up there. I mean, all wildland firefighters are in great shape, but for him as a being a runner... He can just, you know, all right, I'm going to go scout it and get some on the ground imagery for you and yeah. eyes on the trail, man. Oh. It's like, doesn't get real until you see the images like that. Well, and that is, that's, I believe an aid station. That's Schultz. For the old 50 mile course. Yeah. That it's going to be, be out. Yeah. 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 We're going to have to completely avoid <clears throat> the, this half the mountain for probably a couple of years. Mm. Maybe till 2024. It's such like an epic place to run from as well. I see. Should we just uh, maybe pick out a couple of the quick takes? I think we're... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, we don't need to go all the way into them. All right. Um, we had enough great content otherwise. And we had a live see. reaction to oh, you being in Hard Rock, basically. So I'm going to... Any of these that we don't use, I'll save till next week. Perfect. Yes. This one... Thank you. Just because we had mentioned it last week. This is race walking but no. there's a lot of slow motion I saw, <laughs> two, I saw two feet off the ground you see you, you were right Jamil so this is this is how it works is it's only illegal if it's distinguishable by the human eye you can see it on slow motion in all real day time long. in real yeah. time they're it's running like, yeah <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah. and then this is a gif that I blew up so you could it's just like a replay but you see so they're just running with really poor form. Right. With really But, but if form. you look at their knees, it, it, look at doesn't, this guy. It, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Look at the knees. Oh, it's so painful. So, yeah. So, Jamil, you were right, but that's the caveat of race walking is that. So why do they, they cross over is what they do, and that's why it looks so awkward. So to clarify, they're wrong. Oh, because you like get more hip It looks extension. like their knees are going to pop out every oh. time. No, it's, it's the hips. They, like, they yeah. shift the hips all the way forward that's what you do because you're like basically you're just dragging your leg up each time (laughs) well you gotta disguise the run (laughs) (laughs) to make it look like you're like clenching your anyway (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna pick i'm gonna pick we're just gonna rip them apart three more out of here i saw this on instagram wanted to bring this up i've been waiting for this to be released i've known about this for a while a long time Who, who are you taking I'm gonna I'm gonna take whoever's going southbound. 
I mean, they're doing. Yeah, ask this guy. No, he's I'm Mr. Mr. Well, actually, he's Mr. Southbound. I'm Mr. Yeah. Northbound. Yeah. I'm going to take whichever well, direction Mike McKnight's going. in the fall, it's going. traditional to go southbound. Right. In the, the spring, it's traditional to go northbound. So that is interesting factor. I love the gamification of this. Yes. That they're not going to flip the coin until five days out. Like, what a mental F. Like, could you even do that? Oh, it's, I mean, it's such a different, <laughs> I mean, you're, I mean, you're also talking the difference of like 10,000 feet of climbing. Or Dude, we're maybe. gonna have to like do a lot of coverage around this, and like I want to definitely go out there and we should re- like film some do. stuff out there with these guys. It's gonna be super fun. And th- they're not going for an FKT, it doesn't seem like, so we wouldn't can, be. Can you describe this? Because we, I feel like we just started talking about this and we didn't give people an intro. Oh, <laughs> say. yes, I'm gonna. So it's popped up here. So this is Ben Light, Michael McKnight, both elite ultra runners. They're going to be doing a competition, a race along the Arizona Trail, which is an 800-mile route going north-south through Arizona. Um, they're going to flip a coin five days before the race to see who goes in which direction. And the winner of the toss chooses the direction. Yes. The loser chooses the start time. They have a mm-hmm. day, but they don't have the start time. I see. This is awesome. So they each have like a little bit to say in the fate of how it goes so interesting i love it they're racing each other you know gonna high five along the way somewhere and then see (laughs) if they can break the supported fkt totally it's fascinating concept yep you know the record is 13 days three hours 21 minutes joe mcconaughey's record string bean so michael mcknight's a little bit younger but ben is fit as hell dude you seen? I saw this guy's Instagram the other day. Yep. I mean, he's got the beard is like, he's like early forties. He's the beard like being all white, like kind of throws it off a little bit. The dude is like shredded. Adventure your potential is, Mr. Ben Light. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah that look is at the beard. This. Yeah, like look he at is. Him. He is just yoke. He is like ready for this, and he has done so many two hundreds. He knows how to do this kind of thing. And Michael McKnight, of course, you know set. Colorado Colorado Trail record, king of the 200s. So, so yeah. October 15th. Very excited. Right here in Arizona. The showdown. We need like a press run from these two. You know, like they would do in like boxing or something. Let's get them on the pod. That's, I don't know. Um, this was something I found. This is a quick one, but I didn't know they could go this fast. Oh, look at this guy go. This is Tucson. Go, go. <laughs> Look at his fur flapping. It's a good <laughs> perspective against the cream background, too. <laughs> Let him go. Oh, my. See, I didn't know they go that fast. They're pretty Watch much out. I know. It's, don't make their babies mad. Or don't make don't their mamas make, mad. Yeah. <laughs> don't get their... Don't, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying. And then well, I guess we'll finish off with the weird race of the week. This is pantomime horse racing. I think it's in England. Most of these weird races are in England or the UK. <laughs> for whatever reason. Right. They also <laughs> shout uh, out to the UK for bringing us the entertainment. The bed <laughs> races, the cheese rolling. Yeah. Uh, so During yeah. rugby, they dress up in banana costumes. This is like a big charity race event that they do down so there. There are like two people attached together. Yes. Gosh, we would crush this just so you know, Jamil. <laughs> The form isn't great. They're just losing articles of clothing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. This is a huge utter. There's been another fall. Two out of four fell. But yeah, the back guy is <laughs> completely blind. So in the front one, the, the, apparently too. Yeah. Wow. Look at the it's still <laughs> on the ground. So wow. That, that was my rear, my weird race of the week. That one looks like fun. That, that one, one was awesome. Nice. Might uh, need to set that up. <laughs> Seems like a good mountain outpost challenge. Yeah. Let's see. Should we finish off with one last question here? Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. Any thoughts on any of the Hard Rock favorites? Jamil Curry. So that's a great segue into next week's show. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I have thoughts right now. Yeah, correct. I think next week would be a good yeah. time for uh, like hard rock stories to watch. Well, yeah, because I am I am heading up to Silverton at the end of next week to get ready for Kendall and Silverton Alpine. So we may skip a week in there. It's likely we will skip a week. 
since I will be out of state um, and I don't know about doing a remote show. I don't know if it makes sense um, like in Hard Rock Week to do it. So next week's show might end up being like our Hard Rock preview show, I would imagine. So I think we'll table that and might have some news on where I'm at on the list. Oh, you're in. You're in, buddy. Yikes. <laughs> All right. That's it. Thanks Thanks for tuning in. Uh, episode 46. Uh, yeah, it's been great. We really do appreciate all of you in the community, um, you know, checking out our show here each week. It's been fun to do. Thank you to Bryce and Matt for your time in helping to make this show uh, more than just me sitting in front of a camera talking. It's a lot more fun hanging out with you guys. And uh, hopefully you got something out of, of value out of this. And we'll be back again next week. And... Two weeks after that. Bye, everyone. See ya.